Assalamualaikum. My name is Ikmal Ashraf bin Maisa. Metric number S4-5959. We are from K3 uh, Group uh, 7. Uh, we have select uh, KL Kepung, uh, Kuala Lumpur Kepung Bahan. Uh, today, I want to present my part. Okay, the objective of the report is to provide information about Kuala Lumpur. Kuala Lumpur Kepung Bahan. Uh, property, property, plant and equipment. Uh, stand for PPE. Okay, uh, the analysis uh, we do is which we we'll use to indicate either is uh, necessary for KL Kepong Berhad to purchase new PPE. KL Kepong Berhad is a Malaysia multinational uh, company. The core of business is a uh, uh, plantation. For example, the plantation is a uh, oil pump and rubber development. The focus of Kuala Lumpur Kepong Berhad will be investment in uh, research and development and supporting the innovation of plenty operating material. Okay, the plantation is oil pump and rubber. Uh, manufacturing plant is alloy chemical, soap rubber and rubber, uh, rubber glove. Okay, you can see the executive uh, of KL Kepong Berhad. The executive uh, chairman is uh, RM Alias. Chief Executive Officer CEO Tan Sri Datuk Sri Lee Oi Hian Chief Financial Officer is Su Wee Chong Chief Accounting Officer Yong Sing Meng Okay, uh, this uh, total cost and carry amount if PPE Okay, 2015 we get carry amount 4.8 billion In 2016 we get 5.0 billion and 2017 we get 5.2 billion increase the uh, every year that's all for me thank you Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good evening my name is Muhammad Afi Aiman B. Ahmad and my number metric is S47305 Today I want to talk about the ratio of the company. The company that we choose is KL Kepung Berhad. So the first ratio that we're going to talk about is asset turnover and turn on asset ratio. Asset turnover ratio, the formula is sales or revenue. We divide by the total sale for the year. For 2015, KL Kepung Berhad had recorded RM34.6 billion sales. And the total asset is 70.2 billion. We, we use the formula, we got 0 0.75. Uh, for the next year, the KL Kepung record that they got RM60.5 billion. And the total asset for the 2060 is 80.3 billion. And the ratio at the year is 0 0.9. Well, the last year that is 2017, they, they record that they got RM21.0 billion of revenue and the total asset is 19.5 billion and the asset turnover ratio is 1.08. So the efficiency of KL Kepong use is asset to generate become gradually increased from year to year from 2015 to 2017 next the ratio is written on asset ratio the formula is net profit or earnings to divide by total asset on 2015 they record that they got 2.5 billion net profit while the total asset is 70.2 and the ratio is 0.14 for 2016, they got RM 1.3 billion net profit and the total asset is 80.3. The ratio is 0 0.07. While, the, while in 2017, they got RM 1.7 net profit billion and RM 19.5 billion of total asset. So, the number of return on asset are fluctuated. This indicates the efficiency of KL Kepung Berhad. 
to generate earnings is is inconsistent. The third ratio is oh no, we talk about the average is of PBE. The formula is accumulated depreciation. We divide by depreciation expenses for 2015. RM 2.6 billion, while the depreciation expense is 340 million. The average of PBE for the 2015 is seven years and 256 days. While in 2016. RM 2.9 billion accumulated depreciation and the expense for the depreciation is RM 3.387 billion million. The average of HPP is 7 years and 220 days. And the last is 2017, the accumulated depreciation is RM 3.3 billion while the expenses is RM 403 million which is are uh, admin eight years and 109 days. The progression of the depreciation expense over the total expense, the formula is total expense, depreciation expense divided by total expense. And we got 27, 27%. This shows in 2015, total depreciation is PP over total expense is 26 percent. In 2016, we got 30 percent, and that is increased by 3 percent. And for 2017, we got 23 percent, which is it is decreased by 7 percent from the years before. That's about me. My metric number is 46826. So I will proceed to the listing, listing and justification on the usefulness of PPE for Kuala Lumpur Kampung Berhad. So the first one is freehold and leasehold land. The question of land is for plantation, which is the main source uh, generating income for KL Kampung Berhad. Consists oil pump and rubber estate. All the land owned by KL Kepung Berhad located in three different which is uh, Malaysia, Indonesia and Liberia. Uh, the second one is building and improvement. Consists three office building which is main purpose is for corporate and business activities. The building is located at Ipoh, Perak and the other two uh, regional office building which is uh, at Jakarta and London. And next Plan and machinery. The main purpose acquisition of plan and machinery are for products manufacturing, uh, secondary source generating income for this company. Uh, this included uh, earlier chemicals factories, parquet factory, rubber glove factory, biodiesel plant, and surfactant factory. So the next item of PPE is equipment fitting and fitting. Uh, this tool used in way to support the operating activities, which is our plantation, manufacturing, and property development. So the last one of item PPE is capital work in progress. This is the cost of under construction uh, development properties mainly for all farm estate. So that's all, that's all for me. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Muhammad Shakir bin Hamid. My metric number is S45854. So today I'm going to present to you about the models used by the companies to subsequently account for the PPE. So the first point is the models is measure a cost less accumulated depreciation or amortization and any accumulated income loss. So this is the formula to measure it. So the cost of replacing a component of an item of PPE is recognized in the carrying amount of the item if it is probable that the future economic benefit and product within the component will flow to the group and its cost can be measured reliably. The third point is depreciation is based on the cost of an asset less its residual value. If a component that has a useful life that is different from the remainder of the asset, then the component is depreciation separately. So we need to know that 
if uh, the component has uh, different useful line from the remainder of that asset. So the measurable uh, separately. The precision is recognized in both colors on a straight line basis over the estimated useful life of each component of an item of PPE from the date that they are available for. I think that's all for me. So it is, uh, uh, as I know, the models used by the companies uh, is the same as IOI Group and same the That's all for me. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'm Hafiz Zikafli, S45927. So today I'm going to continue from my friends to discuss about the Kelkapong financial analysis. So the question is, does Kelkapong has enough reserve to purchase new PP? The answer is yes, because there are some distributable, distributable capital reserve which are surplus arising from disposal of PPE, properties and government construction of land. Uh, so, Kian Kepong has the ability to purchase new PPE as there are some amount of some of uh, this capital reserve have been allocated. So, uh, based on return, return on asset, uh, the amount has gradually increased from 2015 and to 2017. So the efficiency of uh, Kelkapung use its asset to generate income uh, uh, has increased. So it is uh, so we have concluded and recommend uh, Kelkapung perhaps to purchase new PPE, which are, are highly suggested plantations because the proportion of uh, revenue coming from quotation is uh, almost half from the total revenue uh, from the other uh, activities of business and also the group from the, uh, profit from quotations. So we are highly recommended uh, to purchase new quotations.